Hi there, I'm John from CNCROI.com and today we're going to compare and contrast water jet to laser cutting. Having access to a whole bunch of different tools to cut projects for our customers, uh, custom to their spec is really nice. So for instance, uh, sometimes we use a router, sometimes you use water jet, sometimes you use plasma, sometimes you use laser, sometimes you use you know, water jet. There's a whole bunch of different tools, CNC machines, uh, used to cut various materials. Now, what we generally do with prototyping is that we actually, instead of jumping right to metal, which is uh, a lot more expensive to work with, uh, we generally use our laser to cut stuff out with uh, just MDF, which is basically glorified plywood. So here is uh, MDF. And you can see the burn marks on the underside. Now, sometimes for prototyping it, it matters, sometimes it doesn't, so we just mask it, it comes off. So this is not a big deal. Now here is the water jet equivalent, and this is uh, just cold rolled steel. And if you put one in front of the other, like this here, you'll see that it's just about identical. Now there is a little bit of variance and that just comes from the width of the laser beam versus the water. When, you do, when you're doing water jet cutting, you basically have a stream of water shooting down with sand and it's the sand that's actually cutting through here with the water. While with the laser, we have a beam about the thickness of my hair uh, cutting through the material. Now that beam is incredibly hot, so it cuts more than that thickness a little bit uh, depending on the material. So that's why there's a little bit of variance just because basically the hole, the cutting hole, um, is larger with the water jet than it is with the laser in this case here. Other materials is the other way around. It depends on what we're cutting.
Now every process has a plus and a minus. There is no perfect CNC machine out there that does everything perfectly. In this case here, uh, for the water jet cutting, you always end up with a little bit of a burr at the bottom of it, and that means that we need to sand it afterwards. Now you might say, well, you know, that's not a big issue, and it really isn't. We have an industrial sandblaster to clean up the edges. Now with the laser here, um, the edge quality is totally fine. There's no processing required. But if we're doing wood and that kind of stuff, we still have to sand it. So it's kind of ironic that it doesn't matter what machine we use, we always end up using sand somehow as an abrasive component just to smooth out the underside or the top side or just to clean it up.
The reason why we do a lot of prototyping using wood uh, for metal projects, especially when there's a lot of volume involved, is because of the cost effectiveness of it. Uh, if you're just doing testing to see how something fits, if the holes go at the right spot and so forth, uh, doing them out of MDF is really a great option and we do a lot of that for our customers because a full sheet of MDF is roughly six to twenty dollars while a full sheet of cold rolled steel, we're not even dealing with stainless steel and all that kind of stuff, uh, is about ten to twenty to thirty times more expensive and then you have additional machine costs and cleanup and that kind of stuff. So basically with the MDF we can cut out your design or whatever you want, ship this to you and you could test it right away to see you know, how it fits, how it works with what you want to do. While with this here, um, it takes a little bit longer to produce, it requires more sanding, more work and therefore your price point is a lot higher for this relative to this. Now if you screw up on this thing a couple of times, it's not a big deal, it's MDF, it's easy to rework in your shop. I've done a lot of videos showing uh, some of the metal plates that we do for more industrial customers. Um, in this case here, this is very thin cold rolled steel that's water jet cut, uh, but this can be cut with a laser uh, just as relatively easily. Uh, the, the difference is that with the laser when it comes to high volume, that's where it comes into its own. Uh, so if you're just making like, you want us to make let's say five or ten of these things here, uh, most likely we're just going to use the water jet or maybe the CNC router depending on the material. Um, if you have 500 of these to be done then most likely we'll be using a fiber laser to cut them out and the reason for that is just speed. Speed at the end of the day it's machine time. So low volume water jets amazing, high volume it's still amazing uh, but then the, the laser starts to come into its own later on down the road just because of the speed and it's the same accuracy as you can see here. So if you're looking for custom material to prototype with and then actually go into full on production, contact me at cncri.com and we'll make it for you.